What's good, everybody? It's Hunter Pickoff here. Just survived my first semester of the Caribbean University, I guess. School may be out of session, but the content ain't going nowhere over the summer. Today, I'm going to be giving my top five landing spots for NBA draft prospect Anthony Edwards. He's probably going to go top three in the draft this year, may even go number one. So for this segment, I'm not going to be talking about where I think he's going to end up, but the five teams I think will be best for him and his career. I'm going to try to do this for a couple other prospects too over these next couple of weeks. So without further ado, let's get to number five on my list the golden state warriors they did not have a good season to say the least they have the best odds of landing the number one overall pick and that very well could be anthony edwards but nevertheless the warriors are number five on my list for one anthony edwards gets to pick the brains of three of the most cerebral players in the nba in steph curry clay thompson and draymond green that'll definitely help the warriors are also a first class organization they've been winners one of the best teams not the best team in the nba over the last six seasons from the front office the ownership coaching and even the 15th man on the roster all this team has done is win despite last season so i think anthony edwards will benefit a ton just like any young player would playing for a first class organization like the warriors some of the downsides though is fit anthony edwards is a guy who dominates the ball He's best with the ball in his hands. He's going to have to defer to some of these top all-star players that the Warriors already have. And similarly to a guy like Kobe Bryant, Anthony Edwards is going to have to come off the bench for these first couple of years. So I kind of wonder if and when Edwards would get the keys to the car to become the face of the franchise if selected by the Golden State Warriors. Number four on my list is going to be the San Antonio Spurs. Similar to what I just said about the Warriors, a first-class organization that has a 20-plus year history of winning championships. Any young player could benefit from that. Also, the San Antonio Spurs, they've been able to groom young talent both in the past and in the present. So Anthony Edwards is already entering a good blueprint that the Spurs organization already has. Some of the downsides, though, is just the abundance of guards already on this team, especially if they re-sign DeMar DeRozan in the offseason. I'm not really sure they're gonna or not, but even if they don't, they got guys like Lonnie Walker, Derek White, DeJounte Murray, and Patty Mills already there. And I'm not really sure what the direction of the Spurs team is. Are they trying to win games now? Are they trying to rebuild? I think the lack of direction that I'm at least seeing from the outside looking in is going to, you know, affect any young player entering that system. So for Anthony Edwards, the Spurs definitely isn't a bad situation, but he's going to be fighting for minutes as soon as he gets on that team. Number three on my list, I'm going to go back to the East Coast here and say the Atlanta Hawks fit-wise for Anthony Edwards. Playing with a guy like Trey Young, maybe that alleviates some of the pressure off of Anthony Edwards, who is going to be a really high pick in this draft. We already know Trey Young is a superstar in the making at that point guard position and dominates the ball. Already a super young, talented uh, core, if you will, in Atlanta. So Anthony Edwards can already join a youth movement already going down the ATL. Some of the downsides, though, is what I kind of just alluded to. Is the presence of Trey Young going to stunt the growth of Anthony Edwards, who, like I said, is a very ball-dominant player? And how do the Hawks manage the abundance of talent, especially on the wing, with guys like Kevin Herter, DeAndre Hunter, and Cam Reddish already there? Complement that with Anthony Edwards. I kind of wonder how they're going to, you know, juggle all these minutes and keep all these egos happy, all these players happy, and give them all their looks. So that'd be my biggest concern with Anthony Edwards going to the Hawks. Number two on my list... May shock some people, but I'm actually going to go with the Detroit Pistons. This is a team that's starving for a true franchise player. They have not had one, in my opinion, since Isaiah Thomas. You can argue Chauncey Billups. Yes, he was a finals MVP, but I don't think he was a build your franchise around this guy type of player. But no diss in Chauncey Billups. Terrific player in his own right. But Anthony Edwards, I think, could be a multi-time all-star and be that true face of the franchise that the Pistons desperately need. Some of the downside, though, is that the Pistons had way more misses and hits in the NBA draft as of recent. And I kind of question if they're able to really build a true contender around a talent such as Anthony Edwards and also it's worth noting that even the most talented players kind of get screwed over when drafted to dysfunctional not so great organizations and the Pistons haven't really proven recently that they are a stable organization so I would fear for a guy like Anthony Edwards that he'd fall into um, you know a black hole if you will with the Pistons now finally the moment you've all been waiting for the number one team on my list is the Charlotte Hornets as the best landing spot for Anthony Edwards. They already have a lot of good young role players there. I think they just need a face of the franchise, and Anthony Edwards can be that guy to compliment Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier, Miles Bridges, and P.J. Washington, who are already, you know, beginning to prove themselves in the NBA. This young core can ultimately grow together 
and Anthony Edwards will be given the keys right away to this offense and put up big numbers and you can really be, build this team around Anthony Edwards if you're Mitch Kupchak and the Charlotte Hornets. Some of the downsides though is they couldn't build a, a championship team or even a, a true playoff contender around Kemba Walker who was the last franchise player that they had. And it's also worth knowing that the Charlotte Hornets are not a hot spot for free agents either. So they're going to really have to build this thing through the draft. Mitch Kutkak does have a good history in terms of drafting talented guys. So perhaps he's able to find some diamonds in the rough and really help build this thing up with Anthony Edwards. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate all you viewers out there. Hope you're all staying safe during this quarantine time. I will try to put out more and more of this NBA draft content as the weeks progress. I'm going to try doing one for LaMelo Ball and James Wiseman as well. If there's any other players you want me to talk about or any other topics, at least within basketball, football, you want me to talk about, please let me know. You know where to find me at. I always enjoy making this content even though the school year is over. Got to stay on that grind. Got to keep my mind sharp. You already know what it is. So if you're watching this, thank you for watching and catch me next week. Thank you for watching our latest edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.